In 2017, Hurricanes Irma and Maria caused catastrophic damage across the Caribbean. To assess the tremendous impact of these Category 5 storms on the people, economies and natural environment, ECLAC, on the request of the affected countries, immediately deployed teams of damage and loss assessment experts. The damage and loss assessment methodology estimates the replacement value of totally or partially destroyed physical assets as well as losses in the flows of the economy that arise from temporary absence of damaged assets in addition to the resulting impact on post-disaster economic performance. The disaster assessment team is a multidisciplinary team. In all the assessment that we did, we include medical doctors, economists, demographers, engineers, journalists. Everything is nice and clean and ready for business on a day to day basis. But the hurricane just make a detour on everybody's lives here in the South Kings. Financially, it's not going to be easy. Because the main productive sectors of the economy will be damaged, your tourism, manufacturing, agriculture. Well, tourism sector is the heart of the Caribbean economies and hurricanes affect the assets of the tourism sector. This affects all the visitors that potentially can come to a country. We tend to have a spike in public deficits and debt. We had to collect information on total damages, the cost of repairs, cost for removal of debris. One key piece of information is the total number of rooms damaged and the expected length of closure time. A lot of commerce in the Caribbean is dependent on imports. So if the transportation infrastructure is damaged, then unable to import goods for sale. The commercial sector is impacted through the physical damage from the um, hurricane effects. It's also affected through the different linkages the commercial sector has with the rest of the economy. It's important to assess what happens when in your accounts with houses in order to recommend uh, resilience and recovery. People can be displaced if their, their home is uh, damaged beyond the extent that it's still habitable. Having as close as possible an accurate estimation of those affected is essential for determining the damage. In terms of uh, information that we collect during the visits and the mission, we require from the Ministries of Infrastructure and Housing information data, hard data about the affected areas. And also the, the information that we get from the National Statistical Office is, is important as well because that gives us you know, baseline information about the this, this situation prior to the hurricane and it's against that baseline that we, we, we make the assessment of. ¿Cuánto costaría para ustedes arreglar el techo? 
siquiera me quedé sin casa con ella. Que... Electricity, uh, you don't have electricity yet. Some people with their roofs are leaking, and the lady of the road to the end she got a hole in her roof. My objective is to include a human approach that will add value to an economic assessment by identifying the specific challenges faced by certain groups. I don't have no work. You don't have no work. Yes. So I work for the cruise lines. Yes. And they ain't coming until so December. I just got that information yesterday from the roads. Yeah. So I'm out of a job. Mm. So I'm also paying particular attention to the economic autonomy. Children are not allowed to go back to school because roofs were blown off, windows broken, and desks were destroyed. The impact was certainly significant. And it's not only about the infrastructure, but it's about all the support system that comes to make sure that those kids can manage this stress properly. Why uh, were the schools so affected? Was it because they were very close to the shore? Was it because they were not complying with the building code? Was it because they didn't have warning enough? That is what we try to find on the field. Most of the facilities that we visit, damages were basically ceilings and leakings. They were really prepared and the moment the, the storm was over, they start with all the preventive medicine and they fought and they went to do medical consultations to the houses. A high speed of winds, the high level of precipitation, the high level of humidity, and the possibility of flooding, they are high impact factors. The beach, the sands, uh, the reefs, the mangroves, uh, that, that are attracting the tourists, so it's extremely important to understand uh, these relationships between uh, the provision of environmental services and the economy as a whole. It's important to gather baseline information. That means the state of the ecosystems in terms of area and also health. Afterward, it's important for us to determine the impact. Another line of work is to try to improve the resilience in order to avoid uh, impacts in the future. We've seen some pretty bad damage to the, the microwave link and other technology that is used on the cell towers. Immediately after the hurricane, there is no ability to communicate. This is really a time where most communication is necessary. We look at the, the damages caused, the light poles to the production system for power to the telecommunications equipment. We look at the losses, the loss of service to, to the different uh, customers and the additional costs caused by the need for power generators, for instance. Well, the thing about airports is that they normally get affected on the, the air, con air traffic control tower that affects uh, revenue on the country tourism specifically speaking and you know, in, general, in general terms infrastructure on the airport. Uh, if, if the airport well, or port has been closed during a month so I take all of that info and uh, you know project how, how the losses will be on the, on the island.
when they have that kind of experience, how do you live past that? How do you know that the water that surrounds you can indeed come in at any time and you have nothing to withstand? You can't put up a block against it. It's one thing seeing or reading a methodology in a book, but it gives you a whole different perspective when you're on the ground and you're dealing with persons who have lost practically everything. Although we have a sectoral approach to our assessments, we are a team and we share information to try to make some recommendations for a resilient reconstruction to make sure that all the, the things that went wrong don't happen again. ECLAC methodology is non prescriptive We don't want to impose the kind of reconstruction that the countries should do. When we make these recommendations for resilient reconstruction, we do it in an integral manner. There is no point in just suggesting very specific things for education if we still have a weak building code or if we don't have contingency plans for the power and water sectors, if the houses of these children and their teachers are severely affected. So it's a comprehensive effort. On my way into the office today, I actually stopped at the sidewalk and noticed the flower that bloomed on a tree that was dead because the tree had been knocked over in the storm, yeah. but there was one branch that was still alive. There was a flower. A hope uh, in the midst of all of this yeah. death and destruction, it gave hope. Be appreciative of the beautiful thing. When you step into the sea, look at the sand on your toes. Notice the shells that are on top, just to try to get back to basics. Get back to basics to really appreciate the good things, that, and it doesn't take any time or energy to do that. And you can spread the word, and I would appreciate that. Thank you.